I'm proud of my dad. He's an amazing guy. We got a GoPro right in front of the stage. <laughs> What's he gonna do? Uh, he is the art director from the old pool show, so he's oh, being okay. interviewed up there. Okay, and from the rack, I'm alerting anybody to yours that's intentional. Before everybody rushes off, all right? Hey, we're the Midnight Movie guys. We're right over there. We're very grateful for a bunch of the Midnight Movie crew. The cool show crew being in the house tonight. But especially, we're very humble and proud. All the way from Michigan, we have Mr. Dave Ivey here today. got some great stories to tell about this time up in Michigan with uh, the ghoul and Froggy's the man the dog, Froggy stuff, Phil Froggy's uh, phone, cartoon Froggy's, everything. And uh, he's going to share all the stories with us and that thing. There's stuff coming up on the screen, right? Marco, watch the screen that, that goes along with your story, right? Yeah. So, I'm talking more. My history with the ghoul. I'm going to start out with that. Because, uh, I, okay, I'm from Michigan. I can't help that. I was born there. <laughs> if I was that, born down here, I guarantee I would have been a big fan of the Lardy and the Ghoul and everything. I just, I, I loved it. Uh, I heard about the Lardy from the Ghoul when I got to know him up in Michigan. Okay, uh, my history with the Ghoul started out, what happened was the Ghoul lost his job. Uh, Kaiser closed the station he was on, and he uh, searched for let him to Michigan. Uh, he ended up on Channel 20. He had his whole movie segments. So I had made an animated cartoon uh, goofing on uh, the new King Kong movie, which came out in 1976. So I wrote him about it and said, I've got this movie. Would you like to show it on, on uh, home movie segment? So they called me, knocked me over. I, I thought, you know, they'd probably send me a note. But they called me and said, yeah, we want it on the show. Can you bring, but we don't have any super great sound stuff. Can you bring it over, your projector over to the studio? So I brought it over and uh, ran, they had to have me run the movie, the cartoon, for them uh, ahead of time because a lot of kids aren't real, when they send in their home movies, they do things that are inappropriate, shall we say. Okay? So, they watched my cartoon, uh, King Crook, and uh, they asked me, uh, where did you get this film? And I said, I got it over at the drugstore on 15 now. They said, no, 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 no. Where did you get this movie? I said, I made it myself. You know, I know, I, I taught myself animation. And they looked at each other and they said, now where did you get the film? So I started chilling on the uh, art out on the conference table in front of them and doing the voices of the characters, you know. Like, oh, man, I get this you know, stuff like that. And they were taking a gasp, you know. They, they looked at the stuff and they said, give us a minute. Went in the other room and they came back and they said, would you like to be the art director on the show? And I said, ah, oh, sure, how much does it pay? They said, well, it doesn't pay anything right now, but later on when the show makes money, you'll get paid. Okay. I worked for eight years and never saw any money, but I had a darn good time pulling off creative steam. That, is, that was the way to do it, too. Most guys go out and they root for a ball game every uh, weekend or something. I was busy doing the group. Uh, when I First thing the ghoul asked me to do was, could I possibly make him a, a new froggy? He showed me his froggy. It was a burnt out mess of duct tape and uh, froggy parts from his original froggy. And uh, I agreed, I said, uh, I'll give it a try. So I started making, not this, this is a cutout froggy, but I started making froggies out of uh, paper mache, foam rubber, whatever. And I uh, kept it up for quite a few years, actually. If you go to uh, YouTube, most of those froggies you see on YouTube, those are the ones I made. I also made that big froggy head that is so popular at the uh, 
that was was popular at the cool appearances. Costume, you're talking about costume? Yeah, yeah the froggy costume. I made the uh, big uh, E.T. that he flew off into outer space with. That was a, a life-size puppet that I put together for the show. And I wrote a lot of the sketches and acted in a lot of them too. So some of you might have seen me in some of the, uh, the YouTube things. I've got stories, things that happened. He was up in Michigan for two years before I came moved back to Cleveland. Which uh, I can't see what's on the screen. You are. Does anybody? There, there's been artwork up there. I've got artwork I prepared for this. Yeah, so let me just go throw one up there. Any more? Rock up. All right. Okay. I was <laughs> doing cartoons on my kitchen table with used photo equipment and stuff. Next one, um, I can't see through the lampshade. What's going on? Showing the ghoul. Okay, I'm show, showing my... Uh, Your cartoon to the ghoul. Showing my cartoons to the ghoul and uh, getting the job as the art director. Next one, please. <laughs> Oh, the froggy, I already told you. He, the froggy he had was uh, not suitable for uh, use on the show, but he was burning it up and killing it anyway. Uh, he had, this is his second taping in Michigan. And, oh, yeah, how I made froggies. There's some uh, cartoons. I uh, made them out of paper mache. I made a mold out of Bondo of all things. I had an original froggy because when me and my brother were little shavers back in the 50s, we used to watch the Buster Brown show. And that's where froggy came from, the Buster Brown show. He would uh, tease Andy Devine on the show. So my mom bought me and my brother each a froggy of our very own, which uh, I got out of my attic and used it to make a mold so I could make froggies. That's where the paper mache froggies were uh, done from that. The mold, however, has turned brittle and is no longer usable. So if anybody comes up and wants me to make a froggy, I don't really do it anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, some of the bits on the show, I'm sorry. My favorite, my least favorite bit was the uh, Oh, yeah. Keep her out. Oh, I love the keep her out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do what? You were behind the tree. I was the one who did some set on fire. I found, my neighbor found a ventriloquist coming in the uh, parking lot of the mall he was working at. And uh, he uh, gave it to me and I made it into a ghoul ventriloquist dummy. Which uh, I uh, showed to Ron. It's on there. Which, oh, it's showing them at the, at the tree. Yeah, which I, I made, I came up, he came up with this bit of the Kibur Elf, and I made this tree look like the, the Kibur Elf tree. And uh, they, we didn't have any small microphones, we had big chunky microphones like this. So one of these was duct taped to my chest, so I could not say any damn words because oh. we're doing the show on two-inch Ampex real real tape machines, which means if you say a bad word, they have to stop and hand, hand roll the tape back and start over. So I don't want to have any follow-ups. So I'm inside of the tree. He tells me to just, uh, he's going to come up and ask for Kobasi from the Fugor Elf, and then I'm supposed to give him a hard time. And uh, the, so he comes up to the tree. I tell him to go take a flying leap on a seatless bicycle. Get out of here! I'm trying to I'm trying to do things here. And uh, what he does is he pulls out a two foot long string of two inch firecrackers, throws it in a little cardboard door at the bottom of the tree onto my feet. Now the tree has been duct taped to the wall because it kept falling down. So I'm inside of this current space and I've got the finger elf in one hand <laughs> got firecrackers going off on my 
feet and legs inside of the tree. And I'm leading the doll out of the window going, ow, ow, stop that. Oh, that hurts. All the time I'm thinking much dirtier things to say. <laughs> and as soon as the director yells, cut, I kick the tree off. And I, my pants and shoes are in flames. Honest to God. And everybody that was sitting over there laughing ran over to her and throwing her pop all over my legs. Put out the fire. <laughs> and Ron is looking shocked, going, Honest, Dave, I didn't know I would do that. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, that bit uh, I helped him with, and sorry I was in it. Mike, you would have you'd been fine with me. Next time you go, you'd be in a tree. Okay, Mike. <laughs> so, uh, what's the next bit that I had? I had uh, another story. You might want to put another. Uh, which one is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, what happened with the show is they took their control room and put it in a GMC motorhome. Uh, and so the tape machines and everything are in there and they bring the cameras down and put them in there too. And they told us, we've sold the studio, go find a place to do the show and we'll bring the cameras to you. So we became, next slide, a gypsy television show. We had no home. Home? I have no home. Hunter despised by all the television stations in town. Really, they, nobody wanted this blowing up stuff in their studios. So we were begging the fans at appearances. Do you guys? Oh yeah, I'm glad you like the show. Do you have to have a large building you're not using? So we wound up going from place to place doing the show. I remember our first Christmas show was done in a fan's garage. He moved his boat out and his bicycles and we moved the, 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 the coffin and the set in there. <laughs> and it was uh, us doing the show and the van out in the driveway and uh, snow blowing in. <laughs> and then we wound up over on uh, uh, Telegraph Road in Mopans where they made customized vans. Back in the 70s, that was popular. Trust me. <laughs> there you, you know. Uh, <clears throat> we went to Dale and Rice uh, Studios uh, out in Westland. And then we finally had enough of Channel 20. They took away the Bulls' language, basically. Uh, somebody complained and said, I'm offended. I don't want to hear all that poor stuff. So the the general manager came in and told him a whole list of stuff he couldn't talk about. He couldn't say pierogies, couldn't say kielbasa, couldn't say white socks, he couldn't say, you know, the list goes on, you know, AMRAP, Parma, any of that stuff was offensive to this old lady in Amtrak. It was kind of funny. <laughs> so we finally broke off the Channel 20. The, the girl didn't have anything to say, hardly. And we went to Channel 62, <clears throat> down on, uh, it's the first minority-owned television station in the country. It was down on Jefferson Avenue, right by the river. And we moved in down there. We had, uh, by now we had Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi were uh, at all of our shoots, uh, hanging out, and I was, we were using them for golfers on the sketches. Uh, we need people to fill the scene, uh, or maybe give a small line or something. I could take Bruce and stand over and say, when the ghoul says, uh, uh, slam the door or something, everybody looks surprised. And they did it great. So they got used on the show a lot. Um, finally, uh, after Channel uh, 62, we wound up, uh, it got canceled on air. He said it was a proper viewing for children. Okay, well, I'm sure everybody in Cleveland thinks differently. <laughs> but, um, so he was off the air, and uh, 
after a few weeks, he uh, and Queen Barbara moved back to Cleveland. Um, we got it. Uh, it came back under the uh, uh, management of Video Lab, which was actually Camera 4 and the director from the Channel 20 show. They formed a company to do advertising videos and stuff, and they got Ron to come up to Michigan and do the show. So I was given a long list of stuff to make for the show, mostly froggies. So a lot of froggies came out of that. The big uh, ET that everybody saw in the toilet flying around, that was uh, done by me. We were actually between houses, living in the campground. When they built that thing, people walked by our campsite at night looking at me out there making this big ET figure. Going, what, what are you going to do with that? You know? I miss ET. <laughs> I miss the E.T. Oh, you miss the E.T. After the show, E.T. sat in our basement for like years. And was staring in the meter readers, you know. And come down in the basement and go, Holy shit, what's that? And it's E.T. Don't be afraid. So, there's a lot of bits that we did on the show. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what else I've got on the uh, video. Can you pop another frame up or are we out of here? I can give another story without art if I have to. Uh, I don't think he's... No, oh, there this. we go. This is... That's the puppet for the Keebler. The, oh, the, the puppet. We're already through with that. I'm just gonna give I'm just gonna tell the stories without the art. Okay? That, that works. You don't believe how hard I worked on that art while we were in the hospital. <laughs> and everything screwed up. So don't worry about it. The stories remain the same. Uh, when he was in Michigan, he was doing personal appearances anywhere he could. Uh, so Ron uh, told me about one he did um, at a gene scene which was uh, a chain of jean stores, you know, $5 pants, 70s. We had to be there, okay? <laughs> but anyway, they had uh, a, a little uh, strip mall store, and they set it up so that people would have to come in the front door, go down one wall, get their autograph from the group, and go up the other wall and exit the store. Uh, what happened was, he was back there doing autographs, and the people were coming in, and they were leaving, and the crowd filled the store to where people couldn't get in the store, and to where the crowd was pushing his table backwards against him. So he, he had to slip out the back door, which was behind him. At the last minute, the table went down, and everybody was going, we want the goal. So, uh, the, the people at the store were telling him, get out of here now, quick. So he took off his, you know, the wig and the goatee, put it in his gym bag, and he went out the back door. Ran around the end of the mall, strip mall to get to his car, and there's a mob out there, a huge mob of people, all trying to get into the store. You know, you want the go! So he's running along the back of the crowd, slapping him and counting with his gym bag, going, We want the go! We want the go! We want the And he gets in his car and dicks off. Bang! He's gone. He's out of there. <laughs> so we had uh, a lot of stuff like that going on <laughs> up in Michigan. Uh, I'm so glad when he got back down here, apparently, he got back on the air again. We had to keep sending froggies down. So I just wanted everybody to know I got a, 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 a bunch of animated cartoons that I made for the television show. I was goofing on um, King Kong, Ultraman, because Channel 20 would run Ultraman four or five times a day. The Cisco Kid, uh, Jacques Cousteau was popular back then. I goofed on that. So I got like nine cartoons on a DVD that I'm selling, which also includes 
something you can't get anywhere else. 13 minutes of sound color, uh, the whole movies I shot, on the sets in Michigan, behind the scenes of uh, foggy bits taking place, uh, an amateur, uh, amateur uh, bit where people would come on the show, try to sing or something, and then they get pelted with water balloons on the way out. We have a couple of hoes on there too, those are fun. And uh, there's even a few bits that I was in. You try to see if you can recognize me 40 years younger. <laughs> see him in a diaper. <laughs> yeah, let's no, not talk about that. <laughs> you gotta check this out. I was just watching something. But guys, these are great. You wanna get these. These are fantastic. Behind the scenes. These are awesome. Color, sound, it's awesome. Yeah, and you can't get them anywhere else. They're just on, they're on my home movies. And they're on the DVD, which I'm selling at the uh, Midnight Movies uh, tables over here. And uh, also selling some prints of cartoons that I've drawn. Of, uh, well, there's a tribute to the pool, the frog in there. And then there's a couple of uh, posters, uh, prints from my uh, cartoons that I've done. So if you guys want to stop by the table, I'm also doing a free foggy sketch with every purchase. So if you want a free Dave Ivy foggy drawing, you stop on over there and uh, I'll do what I can for you. And I haven't had any complaints on the DVDs. Everybody's that I've sold them to that has gotten back to me by email has been very happy with, uh, with what I've got. And, and especially like the uh, the whole movie segments. Oh, those are great. Hey, and we came all the way here to the best of health. We wanted to be here this weekend for all you guys at Gilardi Fest. Share his memories, talk about Ron. Stop back there. You gotta get some of this froggy art. It's fantastic. He's got some froggy pens back there. You gotta get some of this stuff. It's pretty awesome stuff. You'll love the ghoul. I haven't, I've never seen so many ghoul fans in one place. This really does my heart good. I'm so glad to see all of you. Thank you very much for having me here. Oh, questions. Anybody have any questions? questions? I have a question. Do you have a favorite boom boom story? Favorite boom boom story. Yeah, favorite boom boom? A boom boom. Boom boom stories. Oh yeah. Uh, we couldn't always get an 80s. Uh, we somehow managed to finagle some M100s from uh, uh, somebody whose dad was a cop. <laughs> so I don't know where he got them, but we never used them 100s before. And we were shooting four pilots down here in Cleveland, oddly enough, for the uh, video lab up in Michigan. And uh, we were over at uh, John Custer's uh, studio near the airport. So uh, they wanted to show the look good, so video lab bought a brand new Golden garbage, galvanized trash can. I think probably put them back about 10, 15 bucks. And uh, one of the first things Ron does is he, he runs them up, runs around the set, and then he throws a, a uh, M100 into the garbage can and runs. It goes off, just about knocks us over. Uh, when the smoke clears, the trash can is gone. It was a flat piece of metal that flattened out the trash can. We never found the lid. We think the lid went bouncing up over the offices and probably stuck up there someplace over the false ceilings in the offices. But that was an earned new respect for the M100s. We put one in a toy and lit it for a regular boom boom. The fuse burned down and fixed and did not go off. And for the next 15, 20 minutes, everybody was going, you go check it out. You, you check it out. Uh, uh, Ron, it's your show. Why don't you check it out? I need all my fingers, guys. Somebody else check it out. <laughs> so we finally knocked it off with a, uh, a broom and got it out the back door into the parking lot and set up a new boom boom, which went off and blew up the toy and several other things around it. <laughs> so, <laughs> now 
not crazy about the M100s, a little too destructive. M80s are fine. They get tried and true and real cow geezers. <laughs> Any more questions? I got a question over here. I'm trying to get a microphone to you. Meanwhile. Okay, and the question is. What are some of your most favorite on camera bits on the Google? Like segments that you appeared on the show that you actually enjoyed uh, filming? On favorite on camera bits? Well, <laughs> obviously my least favorite I already told you about involved my burning shoes and pants. Uh, uh, boy, oh boy, there were so many. Um, I think uh, kind of one of them was, and this is on YouTube, you guys have probably seen it. I, uh, he, he got some clothes out of his coffin and threw them to me. He said, put this sweater on in his hat. And I said, okay, what for? He says, I'm going to introduce you to somebody. And I said, okay. So I stood off to the side, and he calls me in as Beaver Cleaver. <laughs> uh, I'm forced to improvise, you know. Uh, yeah, he said, hey, what do you think Wally thinks of I don't know, Wally didn't do him. So I, the whole bit was improv. And uh, I think we ended with a boom boom. So was, that was one bit I didn't have to catch on fire. That's a good thing. Any more? Any more? Questions? Flaming Frog. Flaming Frog. That's a good Oh, yeah, one of my most favorite bits uh, when the goal was on the WB 55. Uh, they, I was told that uh, I needed some better froggy bits. Uh, and I would be welcome to come down and guess, do a guest shot. So I put together what I called the, the Froggy Flaming Froggy. It was a paper mache froggy mounted with two uh, tubes coming out of his butt. I had one tube rigged up to a bottle of baby powder turned in my mouth so I could blow on it and shoot a big cloud of smoke out of Froggy's rear end. Of course, we all know what that means. Okay, so anyway, uh, the other tube was hooked up to a butane bottle. The gag was the ghoul wants going to finish off his pork and beans and get on with the show. But the pot his pork and beans were in was empty. So he immediately suspected Froggy and calmed him down. Boy, and Froggy comes down. He's got beans all over his front down the front of his shirt. And uh, the girl says, hey, oh, what happened to my pork and beans? Did you eat them? And uh, I'm operating Froggy from behind the, the thing, and I'm bouncing him around while the girl bless the voice, by the way. Hope I didn't ruin anybody's huge <laughs> image. But uh, he says, hey, I don't, I don't like pork and beans. Get out of here. Leave me alone. He starts blowing smoke out of his butt. And everybody's going, And of course, uh, the sound effects guy is taking advantage of it with a lot of appropriate noise. Uh, and then the ghoul leans in front of the camera with one of those big uh, stick lighters right here. Barbecue. And says, I heard you can light these things. And he leans over, and of course, I pull down on the bell. And all of a sudden, Froggy's got a two-foot plume of flames shooting out of his butt. And I got him bouncing around, shooting flames all over the place. And the uh, sound effects guy doing a great job. Thanks, John Basso. Being there. Taking care of the noise. And uh, so he's flying, jumping up and down, and everybody on the set, I mean, all these guys are used to doing the show. Are like collapsing, knocking the bucks off. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody who was there, you can back me up on this. No muscles there, Yeah. Well, anyway, that was great. We also did a Spider Man's uh, uh, party. Uh, frog, I did a phone book for him to go in an hour, and I did a Spider Man party on a different shape with. Uh, 
cut around the middle and I fill them with hard candies. And I have uh, a piece of uh, red yarn that came out of this pen so far, about a foot or so. And uh, it will go, you know, bring Froggy down. Hey, pluck your magic planner. Froggy shows up. And uh, the ghouls, he tells the ghoul, hey, ghoul, I'm deciding I'm going to be a superhero. What do you mean, Frog? Well, watch this. And he goes into the phone booth, I dump him, and get Spider Frog, and have him come out. Hey, Spider Frog, Spider Frog, yada, 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 yada. <laughs> And uh, the girl grabs him and pulls the uh, string out of his hand, hooks it onto a, uh, a stick in the hand, and he's dangling him, saying, Hey, look, it's a spider pinata! And the crew comes in with sticks and starts bashing him, and uh, knocks him in half, candy flies everywhere, and everybody's grubbing for candy as we go on the outreach. Yes. Any other questions? I think they're ready to get the band back on. So, any, qu line? yeah. Any yeah. questions? Anything you want to talk to Dave about, or, or any of the other Google guys back there? Well, Purchase and he's got sketches, like I said. You get uh, the DVDs. Any questions? Stories? Want to hear? Meet Mr. Ivy back there by the midnight movie table, right next to us. And uh, check out back there too. We got the ghouls' actual boo boo table. They blew up all these things on the show. We got a few other things from the actual ghouls' show. We got Mr. Joel Wilhelm back there also. Got a lot of art for the show. He's got stuff. But John Mike also was hanging out back there. We got Big Mike, Mike right here. Put your hand up, Mike. Right there. Right there. A lot of people oh. from who work with the Ghoul show. So please visit the table down there. Hear some stories. Check out the artwork. Enjoy yourself. Check out this DVD though. You're gonna love it. Really, if you get that.